Hello everybody, this is Renji with Sapio TV, and I am here with the Beginner's Guide. I believe it's a similar game to the Stanley Parable, which the Ultra Deluxe Edition is coming out, or it has already come out by the time this video comes out. So I just wanted to play the Beginner's Guide because I heard really good things about it. I don't actually remember what it's about too much, but I guess we'll get started here. Uh, hold on, let me change the graphics options real quick. I'll be right back. Okay, let's begin the game. White screen. Audio is on, I can tell. Thank you. Hi there. Thank you very Hi. much for playing the Beginner's Guide. My name is Davey Reedon. I wrote The Stanley Parable. Uh, and yes. while that game tells a pretty absurd story, today I'm going to tell you about a series of events that happened between 2008 and 2011. That was more than a decade ago. We're Can going you to believe look at that? the games made by a friend of mine named Coda. Now these games mean a lot to me. Uh, I met Coda in early 2009 at a time when I was really struggling with some personal stuff. Hmm. And his work pointed me in a very powerful direction. I found it to be a good reference point for the kinds of creative works that I wanted to make. So just to start you off, this is, I think, the first game he ever oh. made. It's a level for Counter-Strike. You can yeah, walk around I here, can by the way. Tell. And uh, mostly it's just Coda learning the basics of building a 3D environment. Right. But what I like hmm. is that even though he starts from the simple aesthetic of a desert town, he then scatters these There's colorful a... abstract blobs and impossible floating crates around the level. And of course, it destroys the illusion oh, yeah, that this right. actually is a desert town, and instead this level becomes a kind of calling card from its creator. Mm. It's like a reminder that this video game was constructed oh. by a real person. And it kind of makes you wonder, what was going through his head as he was building this? This is what I like about all of Coda's games. I mean, not that they're all fascinating as games, but that they are all going to give us access to their creator. I want us to see past the games themselves. I want to get to know who this human being really is. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. Right, that's like similar to so, the Stanley it's Parable. 2008, Coda starts making these games, and he never releases any of them. He doesn't put them onto the internet, he just makes well, them get and up. immediately abandons them, and they sit on his computer forever. And I think he really understood this image of himself as a recluse. Uh, at one point, he jokingly renamed his computer's recycling bin to Important Games Folder. <laughs> so, you know, this was just how he worked. He tended to crank them out one after the other without even really pausing to try to understand what he had just made. Hmm. Until suddenly one day, he just stopped. Oh, In 2011, too. that was it. He made his last game, and then he hasn't made another one since. And that's why I've taken this opportunity to gather all of his work together. Is because I find his games powerful and interesting, and I'd like this collection to reach him, to maybe encourage him to start creating again. Hmm. And if the people like you who play this also happen to find his work interesting, then I'm sure it'll just send that much stronger of a message of encouragement to Coda. So thanks for joining me on this. If you have a particular interpretation that I haven't mentioned here, or if you just need to get in touch, you can email me at d-a-v-e-y-w-r-e-d-e-n at gmail.com. Okay, that's about it okay. for introduction. Right. Let's take a look at Coda's first proper game. Coda. As each game is loading, I'll show you the date that the it was completed. ending part. This first one was made in November 2008. November 2008, okay. Coda is the ending part of... A piece of music. Whisper machine status active. Evacuate immediately. Oh, it's a shooting game. Very this reminiscent game is of Doom. Whisper, and it's one of the more generic games you'll see okay. from Coda. Is something gonna? You can click to fire the gun. Yes, I know, but there's nothing to shoot at. Oh, finally. It kind of looks like this game was abandoned mid-development. 
For instance, uh, you have okay. this gun, which you'd think would indicate that there are supposed to be monsters or enemies somewhere, but then clearly there are no enemies anywhere. You and can't even reload bullets. the gun when you run out of bullets. Oh, wow. But that's... ultimately, we don't really know. Maybe Coda thought that actually it was complete the way that it is. And I, I think that we should talk it. about his games for what they are, rather than for what they're not. It's fair. Enemy force neutralized. Begin shooting at Oh. Interesting. I love how you can see the bottom of the universe from this room. <laughs> It's a really nice skybox though. You can actually see the corner there. Oh, and there too. Oh. I can't go that way. Can't go this way either. I guess this is where it ends. Oh, never mind. Long narrow hallways. Always uh Apparently this space station has a labyrinth on it. <laughs> I uh... Sure, I don't know. There's really no reason for it that I've ever been able to discern, so in the interest of time, I'm just gonna skip you on past it. Thank you, I guess. Can I go back? I can. Or, if you'd really like to solve the labyrinth, you're welcome to do that, too. Nah, we don't have time for that. Interesting. It's an interesting concept of a game. I... Okay, this is the part that's interesting. The game has this narrative about the whisper machine and how it has to be turned off, and then you get to the engine room. The Stanley Barrow parable is a commentary on games. Hey, you there, in the engine room. You could save us all. That this seems like a commentary on game developing, like developing a game. Future. If you, your body could stop the beam. It's so much to ask, but for all of our lives, would you do it? Could you give yourself? I mean, if... There is a certainty that this sacrifice will save many people. I would not hesitate. Let me pause here for a second. What you just experienced, stepping into the beam and then dying, is probably what Coda had initially intended when he was developing this level. But when he first compiles and plays it, something goes wrong. There's a bug somewhere. And this is what happens instead. Huh. Oh. Okay. Oh, you can see the labyrinth. The beam causes you to start floating. And this is an important moment for him. Because yes, this is technically a glitch, but Coda identifies something human about it. Like how small it makes you feel in the face of this larger chaotic system. Very reminiscent or this of floating a part could in be the, the Stanley Parable. A peaceful place, juxtaposed against all of the hysteria that you've just had to traverse. I, I mm. don't even know. Uh, I have no idea what he was thinking. But what's clear is that after making this, something lodges itself in his brain. He wants to do more of these really weird and experimental designs. So he stops work on this and moves on to a stream of tiny little games that go in all sorts of directions. Let's go ahead and take a look at the first game he made after leaving this one behind. Yeah, let's do it. Still November 2008. The past was behind her. Nice that- oh, I- can I- Yep, in this game you can oh, only walk backwards. That is such a cool concept for a game though. Maybe there's some gaps in the walls, so you gotta be careful about that. Never mind, you don't So have it's to a short oh. and relatively minimalist experiment combining motion and narrative. It is less advanced than the previous game, but actually it seems to be more focused, more complete. Code is trying to give it a unique voice rather than simply basing it on a pre-existing trope. I wonder what that means though, that the walls are not connected to the floors. The past was behind her, but the future could not be seen. Why does the future keep changing? When she stops and looks, it becomes clearer. 
But if the future is always behind her, how will she find the strength to confront it? It's a short little thought. It says what it wants to say, and then it ends. Oh, Didn't need gosh. anything more than wow, that. Yeah, that's a... Which to me is why it works, because it gets out quick. Hmm. Okay, that's like one. a. It's like a poem in video game form. It's like you have very limited visibility in this one. And limited movement, actually. You are now entering. And that's it. Okay, the meaning of this game won't be clear just oh. yet. Please be patient with me for a few more games, and I promise you'll see what makes it interesting. Okay. You are now entering December 2008. Oftentimes, Koda would put bizarre titles like this one in the every start direction. Of okay. I wish I'd known him at the time that he was making these early games. He would really only talk to me about his work as he was making it. Once he stopped work on a game, like, that was it. It was dead to him. Hmm. And I don't agree with that at all, but what are you going to do? Can I jump on the railings? Usually you can. Once you've been slowed to an absolute oh, crawl, the door at the top of the stairs opens. So why, if Code is not showing these games to anyone, why bother opening the door at all? Well, to show you, oh, wow. I'm modifying you the game here so that when you press enter, it'll bring you back up to full speed so you can enter the door for yourself. Okay, strange. It's just a room. Stand on X. Series of lavish manuals. You are a gate. A series of lavish a manuals come with the game, giving you incorrect nice instructions on how to and play. Filled with little ideas for games. You are the queen, dusting your jewelry while your kingdom is destroyed. A button you press to stop the chaos that doesn't Coda work. would often tell me that he didn't mind if people thought of him as cold or distant. He said that he knew that he was actually a vibrant and compassionate person, but that it takes time to really see that. It can be a very slow climb oh. to get there. Huh. There's just some very poetic things in this game. It's very nice. It's January 2009. What happened in December 2008? Ready, set, fish. Don't see a fishing rod. Thank you for the door opening. Feels like Half-Life. Not sure why. It might be because it's like a similar game engine. If I remember correctly. Well, this is new for Coda. It's an actual puzzle. Go ahead and see if you can solve it. Oh my goodness, I'm a genius. Looks like there's a path or something. There must be, right? Unless if I have to click this and then it will open in here. Ah, there we go. Don't forget that solution because we're going to see this puzzle again soon. Interesting. We're going to see it a lot. Three dots in that configurement. Configurement? I meant configuration. Okay. Let's look for three dots, possibly. So that seems to be it, right? You walk down a corridor, you solve a puzzle, you get to the end. Simple enough. Okay. Right. Now I'm going to modify the game again so that when you press enter, it'll remove all of the walls from this room. Okay. Oh my god. What? Why? How about that? There was more to it than we had any way of knowing. I actually find it funny that this game comes after the stairs game since they essentially convey the opposite idea. So, uh, in the stairs game, a dull exterior concealed a rich interior. And then, in this level, a dull interior hides this fantastic <laughs> outer world. Either way, I think that the point is the same. Is that most of the time, Reminds you don't get to know what you're missing. Or Minecraft. even that you're missing anything. Spectator That's mode. not your role as a player. So if your role hmm. here is not to understand, then what is it? It seems my role is... To experience the essence 
of Coda without fully understanding it. That's what I'm thinking. You are now exiting. Aha! Uh -huh. So, this, combined with the entering game from earlier, tells us that Coda believes his games are connected somehow. Yeah. It could even be that the stairs game and the puzzle game are literally connected in between this and the entering game. There's a bigger picture that all of his games are meant to play a role in, some larger meaning that we won't be able to grasp until we've seen all of them. And once we have, we can step back and start to understand what exactly that bigger picture is. This is a fascinating game. The Great and Lovely Descent. Ooh, that is a beautiful house, and that, those looks like hills. Let's talk about video game development for a second. Yeah, let's Every do that. Every video game runs on what's called an engine, which determines what the game can and cannot do. So in other words, the engine is a set of tools for game development. This is a beautiful design for a house. To make all of these games, Coda is using an engine called Source. Right. Like all engines, Source has certain things that it does well, and it has certain things that it does poorly. One of the things that it does very well is boxy linear corridors. That's why so many of Coda's games are set in these large, flat, empty rooms, is just because he's working with what the engine does well. Ooh, we can open them. Good. The tools available to the creator shape what kinds of creative oh. work they're going to end up making. Okay, let's not go down just yet. attention to the architecture in Coda's games, to notice how they seem to stem from an engine that's very good at producing linear Can't boxy corridors. that door. Okay. So we will have to go down that door. All right. Yeah. So there's a limitation to his creativity. And boom, suddenly a platformer, platformer, uh, platformer game hidden inside of a nice cafe. The Great and Lovely Descent is this descent, I suppose. A bit of momentum to my movement, which makes things a little tricky, but it's not that bad. Whoa, that wasn't what I wanted to do. I think we're good though. Oh, we didn't. Oh, we didn't really have to go through all of that. There's more stairs and glass. Okay, yeah, it's very faint, but. There is glass there. And suddenly... Completely underground. Fascinating. This feels like a cattle pen. Like where you keep cattle. Oh. Oh. That's different. Can't exit this way. This prison, funny enough, huh. in Coda's original design, the door stayed shut for a full hour before letting you go. If you don't mind, I think we're gonna skip that. Oh uh, yeah, I don't mind at all. This is something that he and I used to argue about a lot. You know, whether a game ought to actually be playable whether it means anything if no one can get through it. And I would always defend that, you know, all this work goes into the game, why not make it playable and accessible? And so we just got into heated arguments over it, and there was one time that after one of these conversations, he went home, and a day or two later, he sent me a zip file entitled Playable Games <laughs> that was full of hundreds of individual games, each of which was just an empty box that you walked around in, and nothing else. Hmm. Believe me, I played every single one of those just to find out if there was like a gag hidden somewhere. There wasn't. So, playable, accessible. That's a... I mean, accessibility in video games, it's a topic that's brought up a lot. Especially with like the Souls type games. Hmm. 
something to keep in mind that balance. It's, uh, yeah. Do you want to make the game too easy? And what? This architecture makes no sense. We came from a cafe. How? There's that. There are those three dots again. Hmm. It's the puzzle oh, again, it's... with the exact same solution as the last time. Does that... Are those dots trying to tell us something? There's still no clear indication of hmm. what makes this puzzle so special that Coda is going to return to it over and over. But I promise I'll share with you my interpretation very shortly. Well, let's see, those three dots, there are two dots up there and one dot down there. Could be parents and a child. Could be possible. I'm drawing a little bit from the good place there. Okay. Listen, listen, listen. Three people, three dots. Maybe there's a connection there? Here, Coda begins using a kind of dialogue system that he fashioned out of the engine's chat capabilities. Use the mm. one, two, three buttons on your keyboard to respond. Uh, floating colored blocks, two doors and switches. Yes, I did. Uh, I don't like any of those options. Uh, two doors and a... and switches. How would they know there are switches? Wouldn't they only see one switch? Let's go with one. Oh, they, they think this is the prison. The architecture is definitely very source, very liminal. Oh, super liminal. <laughs> it's a lamppost. Okay, I can't tell you quite why, but for some reason, Coda fixates on this lamppost. It's going to appear at the end of every single one of his games from here on out. I'll tell you what I think. Uh, I think that up to this point, you know, he's been making really strange and abstract games with no clear purpose, and maybe you can only float around in that headspace for so long. Because now he wants something to hold on to. He wants a reference point. He wants the work to be leading to something. He wants a destination, which is what this lamppost is. It's a destination. We're going to see it in the work as well. His games are just going to become a lot more cohesive, a lot more fully developed, with more of a clear idea behind them. And as we go, that idea will get clearer and clearer and clearer. Hmm. April 2009. This game is connected to the internet. As you walk around, you can leave notes. All notes you see are left by other players. So kind of like uh, Dark Souls, I guess. Nice room. Not. How do I leave notes? So first off, I'm sure you can deduce this, but this game is not connected to the internet. All of the notes that you're going to see have been written by Coda. This was actually the first game of his that I ever played. This was shortly after I met him at a weekend game jam in Sacramento, where I grew up. I saw him working on this very level, and it was just so different from anything that anyone else was doing. So right away I was like, 
I have to be friends with this person. Whoa. In retrospect, I think I was probably a bit too pushy trying to get his attention. Uh, I was over-enthusiastic. But he was very gracious about it and very patient with me. And I cooled off eventually. Oh, feel free to skip over any of these notes if they're not doing anything for you. Nothing extra is going to happen if you read all of them. Either way, to me they convey a sense of loneliness. I see this person who's filled with thoughts and feelings and beliefs and has no way to express them except as scattered and unheard voices in a game that wasn't meant to be played. But it's ironic, isn't it? That in playing this game and seeing how alone Coda often felt, that we get to know him better and actually kind of connect with him. And I have to be honest with you, this idea is really seductive to me. That I could just play someone's game and see the voices in their head and, and get to know them better and have to do less of the messy in-person socializing. I could just get to know you through your work. I think this is why I always liked Coda's games so much, is because it felt like they let me have that connection. I felt as though he was inviting me personally into his world. And then I feel less lonely too. I'm king of the world. Yeah, Titanic. <laughs> this place makes me sad. Hey, hmm. that's a lot of notes and a lot of places that I don't think I can actually get to. Uh, the sh is this cavern? Boring. I can assure you guaranteed that there is an acorn somewhere here in this place and the sailors are looking for it. Hey guys, just looking for someone to talk with. I refuse to believe. Hmm. Classy. I need to go to the frickin' bathroom. Recognize me, please. There's nothing here. Go back. Don't listen to that guy. Free t-shirt. It That would be actually very interesting. Like a game where all it is is just putting down notes and see what kind of thing happens. Makes game. Includes door. Cannot open door. Thanks. Open sesame. Door how open. Someday I will meet the person who made this. You know, it's also an interesting insight into this guy's psyche because it's one thing for someone to tell you what they think about something. It's another thing for someone to tell you what they think other people think about something. And clearly Coda thinks that people will come to the door and be like, oh, this is terrible. Not sure what the free t-shirt means, but I think he thinks that people won't get his game in a way. I hope people, because of the internal good feeling I get, I'm guessing. New room. Do you hear the chimes? They keep you going, don't they? Don't hear the chimes. I like very much to be desired. Scared of writing something? Don't want to feel judged. It's not very crowded here. Welcome, congratulations. I don't really know where to go with this. You can go in here, I think. Eh, don't bother. A game where you leave notes and suddenly everyone's a poet. This is where I get off. I failed to write anything here. I am compelled. Stop, turn back, proceeding further will only result in misery. Take my hand, let's jump together. Interesting. Cabbage shapes our nations. Uh, what is that painting? Does not matter if you get over there. Hey, don't talk about me that way. Very good game. I think I'm this is not going anywhere. Next time I will do better. That's from Coda. That's really from coda i need someone to talk to this is a note don't listen to the other notes i'm not safe huh today i learned you cannot fall off oh you really can't ethical there are no notes down there i'm guessing it means that nobody has reached down there or coda thinks I saw a person walking down there now it won't come back Don't see him. Little Tower Star. Not gonna read all these notes. Take too long. It's about how this game is pretentious and you all suck. Well done, all of you. Those are dots. He has a things with dots. Stop faking it. From up here, it just looks like oh, dots. Because it is. He was himself the most horrible creature he could imagine. Maybe I'll feel real someday. Well, I'm here now. Yeah, we're all here now. There must be a reason for it, though. 
This terrible secret, you kept it well. I beat the game. More room? At the end of this level, we're going to see the puzzle again. And here, I'll tell you what I think the puzzle means. Each of these games represents an idea that was on Coda's mind at the time that he was making it. And the puzzle is a way of closing the door on a previous chapter of his life before moving on to the next one. I wish there were notes in the real world. Well, downward, keep digging. In each of his games, after exploring a theme that, you know, he might find difficult, Coda can then place this puzzle that he knows has a reliable solution, he understands exactly how it works, and so it gives him a simple mechanism for moving on. And because there's this dark area between the doors, a space between spaces, before you move on, you get to pause. Just for a moment, a few seconds to reflect on and let go of the events that led you here. To step back and connect the pieces together. To grasp at that elusive bigger picture. How do you leave notes? Why is that the last note? And there's the lamp again. Typewriter. Typing away. I'm saying something. Hi. Oh. Okay, this one is tough. It's gonna kind of just spin its own wheels for a few minutes. Hang with it. Okay, I think this is the last chapter I'll do before ending this episode. Okay. There's clearly a theme of descent in all of these puzzles as well. We're going down most of the time. Now See, we like, gotta go this up. Is it, the whole game. And there's nothing that's particularly interesting about it. You just walk to the end of a hallway. Except, for some reason, Coda gets really fixated on this prison that has all of this modern furniture. And I don't know why, but he decides he needs to revisit this prison. He's gonna start over, use the same assets, turn it into something else. Okay, cool. Here's version two. Okay. Uh, now the furniture's gone. Let's put a giant hole in the ground. That's not a giant hole in the ground. Uh, let's put a huge picture of a horse. Those are not horses. Should light up this room a bit. We'll just put live Tesla coils in each corner. Yeah. That's not a Tesla coil. Starting to see a pattern here. Tables were invented in 1935. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, there's a bit more to this one, but still it's not really communicating anything. It, it's kind of just weird for weirdness' sake. Ah, uh, I think there's something here. So, okay, he throws it out and starts over. This time he comes at the prison idea from a different direction. Hello, please walk forward. This is very Stanley Parable. <laughs> this guide will enable you to escape any prison environment. Follow the instructions carefully. Take care that you... Okay. First, click on this table. There's that three dots again. Good. Go over to the photo frame and click to turn this slightly. Turn the floor lamp in this room off, then turn it back on. Now go to the left side sofa, move it over a little. Finally touch the shelves. That's it, in a real prison, the escape will now open. Return to the start to be taken back to your prison. Okay, now I guess we do the same exact thing all over again. Okay. And of 
course, now the table is gone and you can't begin the chain of events to That's escape. clever. Here's a version where there are no bars, but you can't actually get to the well. And then a version where the inside of the prison is the outside, and the outside is the inside. Huh. Let me just blink you real quick through a few more of these. I mean, he really unloaded on this prison idea. There's nearly a dozen of them. Personally, I think it's awful to watch this. To see a person basically unraveling through their work. And for what? Like, at what point do you just go, eh, maybe there are game ideas other than this prison that I could be working on. But hmm. Coda doesn't have that voice telling you to stop. That particular mechanism of defense Whoa. against yourself. Without it, you just spiral. And so he keeps going and going and going and going and going. And then he hits on something. And he likes it. And that's it. He's done. He stops making prisons. He's escaped. This is the very last version of the prison game that he created. And the, the reason I think it works is that the prison is not actually in is... The prison game is the prison. It's the burden of creativity. The infinite amount of ideas that are possible. The endless possibilities of creativity is his prison. And the lamppost is a fixture that's a beacon of light guiding him out of the labyrinth. Who is this? Hey, it's me. I'm you from after you escaped the prison. You're me? Hmm. So you were trapped in this prison too? It's a conversation. Huh. And so this is what Koda wants, is to be able to talk to someone, to share what's on his mind, and to get some good advice from someone who knows. But the irony is that even in this scenario, you're still talking to yourself. Yeah. You know, all of these games so far are Coda talking to himself. And Coda talking to himself about the games he created in his games. Wow, very meta. Yeah, I was in the escape tutorial. That's where I am right now. Oh, I'm so glad to know what he did that I get out eventually. What's it like to escape? Feels like being completely still and wildly in motion at the same time. Do you feel any different? Sometimes I'm scared I'll get out and then things will be exactly the same as before. It actually does change. I don't feel like the same person at all. Oh good. So nice to hear. That makes me feel really happy. Age just kind of does that, you know? Wait, if you're me, then did you get a call from another version of you when you were trapped? Yes, I did get a call. That's how I escaped. What did they tell you? What did you have to do to get out? All they told me was to be sincere. What? That freed you? How does that work? It will make sense. Sincere about what? That's exactly what you need to figure out in order to escape. I can see why he considers this a fitting conclusion to the prison games. After all of the obsession and frustration, just to be told by someone you can trust that things are going to be okay, wouldn't that be nice? Hmm. Okay. Now, that was an amazing experience, and I will continue this game next time. But before I go, if you watched up until this, Part. I'm just letting you know, Sapio is a part of a new podcast and you should check it out because he's doing it with two really amazing people and uh, it's a lot of fun. And I mean, I do random games, so that podcast is about gaming. It's, I think it's really fun. You should check it out, definitely. So yeah, I put, I'll put the link in the description and um, I'll see you next time, I guess. Uh, still no outro today. I just, I don't know if I'll ever do an outro. 